हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकलिट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द मेगा रिविजन पार्ट सिक्सटीन फॉर द एनवायरमेंटल साइंस एंट्रेंसेस एंड दिस वीडियो वी विल नो मेनी इंटरेस्टिंग कंसेप्ट अलॉन्ग विद द फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट क्वेश्चन इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिपेयर फॉर आवर एग्जामिनेशन सो गेट रेडी विद द पेन एंड पेपर सो दैट यू कैन राइट डाउन ऑल द इम्पोर्टेंट नोट्स एंड बिफोर दैट आई वु लाइक टू से दैट देर इज अ टेलीग्राम ग्रुप वेर यू कैन जॉइन एंड यू कैन पार्टिसिपेट इन द डेली क्विजेस in order to strengthen your preparation so the link will be provided in the description you can also join our instagram page for the current affairs and regular updates related to environmental science so without much delay let's get started so guys there are already 15 parts in this series for the mega revision where we have discussed more than 500 questions and this will be very very important as i am telling you repeatedly you can check the link given in the i button So the first question is on your screen the question is gasification is what and here four options are given you can read and i will wait for certain seconds then i will reveal the correct answer so here the correct option will be option number 1 yes first of all you should know that gasification so here gas will be formed so for example if you are talking about humification then what we are getting we are getting humus similarly in gasification we will get the gases product in the final product so in all the options you can see here it is mentioned converted into flammable gas mixture here it is mentioning into liquid so this will be not correct because it is asking about gas and here no liquid is required next thing also this option will be also eliminated because it is also talking about liquid as the final product so these two will be the final two choices and among them option 1 will be correct because it is the high temperature process yes high temperature kitna hota hai so it is around 750 to 850 degree celsius this process where it is the conversion of solid carbonaceous fuel that means which is composed of carbon into flammable gas mixture so this is the technique and you have to mention me in the comment section the mixture consist of which gases coming to the next question the next question is very analytical conceptual one let us read so the question is telling two water samples were collected so sample one was having ph is equal to 9 but there were no carbonate or other dissolved proton donors or acceptor present सो यहाँ पे सैम्पल वन में जो है उसका पी एच मेजर किया गया दैट इज़ इक्वल टू नाइन बट वहाँ पे कोई भी कार्बोनेट या डिजॉल्व प्रोटोन डोनर्स वहाँ पे मौजूद नहीं थे सेकेंड सैम्पल इज हैविंग द पी एच ऑफ एट पॉइंट थ्री बट इट कंटेन्स डिजॉल्व एन ए एच सी ओ थ्री दैट मीन्स सोडियम बाई कार्बोनेट वॉज डिजॉल्व इन दैट एट ए कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन मिलीग्राम पर लीटर सो द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज ट्रू based on the above observation so these two are the observation of sample two samples and we have to tell which is the true observation based on the two sample so here the correct option will be option number 2 yes sample 2 will have the more alkalinity as compared to the sample 1 why someone will say that ph is 9 here ph is less then it will be sample 1 that will be having more alkalinity but this is totally wrong because your concept is wrong let us know what is the concept behind this so here comes the concept part so first thing which i have highlighted is that you should not be confused with the basicity and alkalinity so alkalinity and basicity are two different things aapko confuse nahi hona hai most of the students are taking it as both are same but both are different how because alkalinity is the capacity of water to resist the acidification but basicity is an absolute measurement on the ph scale so ph scale value is telling about the basicity it is not telling about the accurate alkalinity of the substance so here what is alkalinity alkalinity is the strength of a buffer solution composed of weak acids and their conjugate bases so here what was present the conjugate base was sodium bicarbonate so it was present that's why it will be having the sample 2 will be having more alkalinity because in the sample 1 there was no carbonate or any other conjugate base present but the ph was high so it was telling about the basicity but here in the option it was given alkalinity so option 2 will be correct so i hope it is clear to you next move on to the next question so here this question is the numerical so this numerical is also very frequently asked it came in june 
UGC net environmental science paper let us read the question the question gave the following chemical composition where the calcium ion concentration was 15 milligram per liter magnesium ion concentration was 10 milligram per liter and sulfate ion concentration was 30 milligram per liter and what the question was asking the total hardness of the water will be how much so here in order to find this we should know a very very simple formula so let's move on to the next slide so here before going into the formula let us know the concept behind that as i have said already you should know the concept no bakwas so here the question is where does hardness in water come from so hardness water ka jo hardness hai it is primarily because of the dissolved mineral compounds so the mineral compounds when they are present in the water that causes the hardness of the water so what are the mineral dissolved so mostly calcium and magnesium are the dissolved minerals which are contributing to the hardness of the water and although there are smaller contribution to the hardness of water which are coming from the other elements such as iron and manganese but mostly it is caused by calcium and magnesium ions so in the question it was given about calcium magnesium and sulfate all the concentration but we have to only consider calcium and magnesium so here no need of sulfate ion concentration because the formula to find the hardness is 2.497 multiplied by the concentration of calcium plus 4.118 multiplied by magnesium ion concentration so these two are important if you are having two concentration just put this formula and you will get the answer so what will be the answer after solving them we will get the value as nearly 80 milligram per liter that is the total hardness of water and take this as round form that is 2.5 and here 4.1 so this will be very very important kindly note down this formula let's move on to the next set of questions so the next set of questions are on your screen and very very important and very frequently asked question let us read it which one of the following is referred to as super oxide radical options are o that is singlet oxygen oxygen molecule o3 ozone or o2 dot so here most of you will be knowing the answer let me remind you here the option number three will be correct that is o2 dot which is the super oxide radical and many questions are asked related to this so you should know that let us move on to the next slide to know more about what kind of questions can be asked so here there is the super oxide notes you can note down i am telling you so here super oxide formula is o2 dot or you can say o2 minus so why o2 minus as you can see here there is one lone electron so here the systematic name of superoxide of the anion which is anion that means it is having the negative ion that means it is an ion the systematic name is dioxide 1 minus so you should remember this superoxide ka systematic name hai dioxide 1 minus so this is a reactive oxygen ion yes it is very very reactive oxygen ion species it is coming under the ROS that is the reactive oxygen species which is the superoxide and it is particularly important as the product of the one electron reduction of dioxygen so when oxygen molecule O2 loses one electron it forms the superoxide so as you can see here one only electron is there it is not paired so that becomes the superoxide when the oxygen molecule reduces or loses one electron so now we will know three important points for the superoxide the superoxide forms salts with alkali metals and alkaline earth metals so in the options they can ask superoxide can form salts with which of them so both with alkali metals and alkaline earth metals superoxide can form salts next point is the superoxide is highly reactive so as i said it is a reactive oxygen species it is highly reactive but it is short lived so half life of superoxide is very very less so in short half life is of the superoxide next thing is both dioxygen that is o2 and the superoxide anion that is here o2 dot or o2 minus are free radicals that exhibit paramagnetism so this is the property of both dioxygen and this superoxide ion that they are the free radical that exhibit the main and important mechanism of paramagnetism so i hope you have written down all this let's move on to the next set of questions so the next question is coming from the ecology and biodiversity conservation let us read the question the question is which among the following 
is or are advantages of the captive breeding program for the protection of wildlife fauna so here three options are given it can eliminate the need to preserve critical habitat it is comparatively easy for highly mobile species such as migratory birds or it can be used to enhance the genetic diversity so here you have to select from these four options so here the correct option will be option C yes only the first statement is correct about the captive breeding program how captive breeding program means inside a chamber or in a closed place these wildlife are protected and they are preserved not in their natural habitat so it eliminates the need to preserve the critical habitat so no need to preserve or conserve the natural habitat of these fauna because they are not required because they are inside a captive breeding program next thing what it was telling that it is comparatively easy for highly mobile species so it is not at all easy for the mobile species highly mobile such as migratory birds because they won't live inside a captive breeding program inside a captive cage like so it is a cage i'm telling but it is actually a well maintained structure and it can be used to enhance the genetic diversity is also not correct because if they are not in the natural environment if they are inside a chamber inside a closed habitat then the genetic diversity will not be enhanced it will be constricted and retained in a particular habitat so this option 3 that is statement 3 is also not correct it is also incorrect statement 2 also incorrect only statement 1 is correct for the captive breeding program for the protection of wildlife fauna let's move on to the next question the next question is which of the following is or are true about the sulfur dioxide gas so very simple question i hope everyone will be able to answer so here the correct option will be both are correct yes sulfur dioxide is a colorless gas with strong odor or pungent smell and it is also used as the food preservative yes so for some of you it will be the new concept that it was also used as the food preservative and it is also nowadays sometimes it is used as the food preservative but it is not good because its concentration when it is increased then it can cause trouble in our body so these two statements are correct about the sulfur dioxide gas so this question is coming from the pet coke so let us see what is this pet coke and what the question is asking the question is asking which of the following is true about pet coke and the first statement is it is a byproduct of petroleum refining next thing is it is responsible for releasing high sulfur content so which of the following is correct and here both the statements are correct yes pet coke or petroleum coke is actually a byproduct from the petroleum refining process and yes it is also responsible for releasing high sulfur content because it is also a very very harmful pollutant so the next question is which of the following is not a mike that is mic sites in india so if you don't know what are mic sites then i will let you know don't worry first of all let us know the answer which is not a mic sites so ranipur is not a mic sites in india but chirangripu garo hills and shivalik are the mic sites in india so let us move to the next slide to know about all this because it is also very important so first of all let us know what is a mic site or mic program so it is actually a program whose full form is monitoring of illegal killing of elephants so you should remember the full form monitoring of illegal killing of elephants and this program was established by sites c i t e s so iska agar aapko full form pata hai i hope you will be knowing comment me in the comment section which was adopted in the conference of party 10 that is cop 10 in the year 1997 so question can also be asked when was mic program adopted it was adopted in 1997 in the cop 10 program so what is the main purpose of this program so it is an international collaboration that measures the levels trends and cause of elephant mortality yes elephant death monitoring in a proper manner is done with the help of this mic program and it is used to support international decision making related to the conservation of elephants where in asia as well as africa so these two continents are the main focus for this mic program and in india there are 10 sites you should remember what are they they are chirangripu in assam dihing patkai in assam eastern dwars in west bengal deomali in arunachal pradesh garo hill in meghalaya mayurbhanj in odisha mysore in karnataka 
नीलगिरि इन तमिलनाडु शिवालिक इन उत्तराखंड एंड वायनाद इन केरला सो इन आसाम देर आर टू साइड्स ऑफ माइक चिरांग रिपू एंड दिहिंग पाटकाई एंड रेस्ट आर हियर काइंडली नोट डाउन दिस और एल्स आई विल बी अपलोडिंग दिस इन आवर इंस्टाग्राम पेज यू कैन चेक फ्रॉम देयर ऑल्सो सो दिस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई होप यू हैव लर्न समथिंग न्यू फ्रॉम हियर आई होप इट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू डू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल टू गेट ऑल फर्दर अपडेट्स कीप स्माइलिंग एंड बिलीव इन योर सेल्फ सी यू गाइज इन आर नेक्स्ट वीडियो